Oh yeah, Ryan yeah, Cropper in the chat. <laughs> uh, so if anyone <laughs> is struggling to see Ryan's uh, stream, because it, Discord only allows fifty people to see a stream. I think there's over 50 now. So if you're struggling to see, uh, if we have any volunteers to stream, Ryan's stream, that would be great. And then others can sh watch your stream. Uh, there's usually a few volunteers. We'll, we'll sort it out. So don't worry if you can't see his video yet. We'll sort it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for coming, Ryan. Very. Uh, no problem. I actually prefer this. To like every other live platform. Yeah, it's great. What have you just been using, like Zoom and stuff? <laughs> Not even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been using um, YouTube Live and a webinar jam platform that's very expensive yeah. to do yeah, stuff this is, like this. This is really good. It's very interactive as well. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. like I'm in a room full of people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I was actually just laughing before because uh, when we first started this server, one of the first emojis we uploaded was uh, an emoji of you. Uh, oh, really? No yeah. way. So if you go on, uh, if you see it where the live event is, uh, can you see the text to voice channel uh, just above it in the text to voice? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, everyone's. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've Brian got. Parker. We've He's got, a really good YouTuber. <laughs> we've got a lot of uh, a lot of fans there. Uh, so cool. A lot of your videos have been linked to her as well for a while. So yeah, um, if you want to, you know, introduce yourself or show any of your videos or courses or whatever, you can. Or we can just go straight into Q and A, and people yeah. can just two hundred thousand followers on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> Getting there, it keeps. I should have hit two hundred thousand like two years ago, to be honest. But for some reason, I post a video. This is crazy, and the subs just disappear. Like it's weird. I went up like this, then all of a sudden I'm hitting this benchmark, which is really tough to get over. And I've been stuck there for literally over a year. But um, we'll see. We'll see. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ryan Cropper. I often say I'm Ryan JC. Ryan James Cropper, and I'm a spiritual life coach. I started my YouTube kind of career uh, making videos on astral projection. Been doing it for around 26 years, give or take a few years, and I'm good at it. So, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much it. I mean, I mean, there's, there's obviously more. I stopped making videos on astral projection started making more videos on other spiritual matters uh, because I do more than just astral projection, <laughs> much more. I'm actually kind of spread out when it comes to the spiritual field. I'm dealing with the mind, the placebo effect, biokinesis, uh, altered states, triggering psychedelic states without taking psychedelics, a whole bunch of very weird, strange things. I've only recently started astral projecting even more as of late whilst here and you know it's interesting every country has a different set of spirits in indonesia they have bali spirits that look like something out of a fairy tale They're very strange and in certain parts of europe you have literal fairies yeah oh wait can you say that again I, I think, yeah, we'll just mute the mic. There we go. Oh, she can come back. Remember whatever you were saying and come back after. Yeah. But all I was saying is different countries, you get different spirits, different entities. In the States, it's full of what some would consider demonic beings. It's like heavy entity related activity over there, not so much ghost activity. In the UK, it's all spirits and ghosts. Nothing like you see on TV, of course. I said to someone the other day that on TV, you know, humans greatly exaggerated a lot of the things you bump into over there, uh, like greatly exaggerate them. I think the human mind is more terrifying than what's actually out there in the astral plane. But uh, yeah, that's just kind of me scattering about with certain things. Do you have any questions on on this? Yeah, if anyone wants to mute their mic and ask, uh, just ask and... You know, Ryan, if you want to 
look in the text to voice and see any interesting questions you want to answer you can or someone else will just ask it for them uh, so yeah, yeah. Go ahead, guys. so I heard you talking about uh, now you can go I don't know who that was but um, yeah last night I was practicing um, a separation video for an astral projection and it felt like the bottom of my body was separating a little bit um, kind of like my body was melting in bed. Um, is that a really good sign? And then, like, on that, I've been getting random little flashes in my vision um, randomly. And I don't really picture things in my mind. So I've just been writing them down. But, like, it's okay. been pretty strange. Do the flashes happen before you're going to bed or do they happen throughout the day? Um, the flashes, no, they're like when I'm relaxed at work, which is seldom. Are they white flashes? No, no. Um, today I, I wrote down the days and the times. It was like, um, I closed my eyes and I saw like a big eye opening and closing. Um, first it was really small and then it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I felt like a third like a whooshing by my third eye, which was interesting. And then I saw a red dragon flying up. I saw like, imagine if you saw like the head of the red dragon uh, and you saw like the neck up in the snout. It was like a little bit of white on the neck and red. And then like, I saw the side view of it. And then um, later in the day, I was just like, you know, relaxing. <laughs> And I saw these two white statue faces, and there was like a male on the left, a right on the female on the right, and they were kissing. And it reminded me like of American Horror Story a little bit. Mm. All right. And I, well, that sounds. In Fantasia, I can't imagine anything. So random flashes like this that are extremely like detailed is strange. Now your third eye's opening because you're a, you're. On the cusp of astral projection, this, this sounds like what's happening. You're actually astral traveling during the day, so you're seeing specific locations. And once you get the hang of astral projecting, you can pick a location that you're seeing with your third eye and actually project there consciously. It's really handy. It's super handy. The reason why you're getting stuck in your body is because your your astral body is out of shape. Often it happens with beginners; they haven't used it for like ever. So it's kind of like having a leg that you've never used for your, your entire life. And uh, you go to stand on it, and you just fall over. <laughs> and so there are certain methods that you're probably going to have to do uh, in order to get that more, what should I say, worked out. You know, just to give yourself some type of shape and form. That way, you won't have these problems where part of you is stuck and another part of you is facing through your bed or stretching throughout the room. Uh, there's actually a method. Yeah. I've done, um, have you, are you familiar with the gateway tapes, Ryan? No. Okay, so basically they help expand your consciousness, blah, 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 blah. Um, and focus 12 is where your consciousness goes from being inside of your head to like your immediate surroundings. The way oh, cool. explain it is like um, going from the base of your skull, like the back of your head, to like, being the oxygen in the room, like you take up all the space. Um, mm. I can do that really well, but like I okay. can't project. Yeah, yeah, so your awareness isn't contained at all, which is why that happens. A lot of the really good methods out there hinge upon a person having their awareness outside of their body. You go inside your head, start thinking or imagining stuff, you get stuck. In, in the process of imaginary exercises. So you might find yourself daydreaming or falling asleep or just doing other things that require your imagination because you're trying it from this point inside your actual head. So any method that has you focus on your external environment will have you actually project into your external environment. The reason why you're scattered like that into everything is because you, you don't have any form yet. Uh, I'd, I'd suggest doing meditations that allow you to have form a few that I would recommend, for example, there's one where you can actually you can actually stand in your room facing two corners in front of you. You close your eyes, you take one physical step forward, 
noticing how you're getting closer to those two corners. Then you take one physical step backwards and you do that a few times and just notice the, the gap in front of you closing. So that's going to help for later. And then what you do is you try to, I call it the phantom body, take a phantom step forward as if you're actually astral projecting. <clears throat> and you should notice that it feels like you're getting closer to those two corners and that space in front of you is shrinking all the while. And that allows you to have a perception of actually separating from your body outside of you as opposed to inside your head. And that will also give you shape and form. That's quite a big step for most people. and It's not quite easy to do. And so there are other method meditations that you can do to form some type of shape about you in the astral plane. The most easiest one is you take your hand. For those of you who probably send this on my site, you know what this is. But for those of you who are new, you take your hand and you put your thumb to your pointer, then your middle, then your ring, then your pinky. And you go back and forth like this. Don't double tap like that. Just go back and forth. And you do this to the point where you've built rhythm and you've zoned out. So your eyes have kind of zoned out because you're focusing so much on the movement. And then you put your hand back to normal. You don't shake it out because it messes everything up. You just put your hand back to normal and you should notice something happening. It should, you should notice a kind of phantom projection that's still moving in that motion. Then you take control of that motion you either go slower, you go faster, you stop it on one finger if you want, or you can go crazy with it and make like a spherical shape with your energy or your astral hand. Uh, I'd actually say move your mind away from the idea of feeling and energy because then you're just going to focus on your physical hand or any type of magnetic field. You only want to notice some type of phantom movement, then control that. So it's more like a discovery process. You do this without really knowing what's going to happen. And then it just happens by itself. But then you know what to pay attention to. You know, you can also make like a square with your phantom hand and stuff like that. It will help you manipulate your energy body and give it some type of form. You can get crazy with it as well. Like you can do bigger movements. You can sit on the chair and, and juggle one spot until you zone out, you've built rhythm, and then you stop moving gradually and it feels like you're still going. You can completely just shift your awareness to that thing that feels like it's still moving and then turn your entire phantom body the opposite way if you want and, and face the wall behind you or stretch really high and, and put your head on the ceiling and come back you know while that's happening you'll notice that your third eye will start opening as well like it has been doing you'll start to see the room around you and that will greatly yeah benefit your whole process i took your your advice on how to use energy and how to push out energy with your chi work you know the back of the trick yeah um and then I've had a thing for like months where if I zone out too much, like if I zone out and I stare at one thing, it seems like my vision starts to go through different filters. Like it'll be normal, then it'll be black and white, then sepia, then normal, then black and white, then contrast, then low contrast, then black and white. Oh, and it's really weird. And I think that's like my body almost astral travel, <laughs> like traveling, but I haven't, I haven't fully seen it through because I'm scared. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe you have to keep doing it until something happens. You might be on the cusp of figuring out another ability. Most of the abilities that get developed are because people are experimenting with these external sensory perception uh, states of being. And so, yeah, I'd say keep going. Just keep going. You know, if you want to stop things from happening, just stop the practices and kind of hope that everything goes back to normal. Well, thank you for your insight. I'm definitely going to take some of your advice. No problemo. Yeah, I've been there. It's it's not fun being stuck in the body. And uh, especially if things are around you and you can't do things, it sucks. But it sounds like you've got two abilities uh, kind of being awakened in you, be that astral travel and astral projection, which I think everyone should have the astral travel because it just helps greatly. You can go anywhere you want. Yeah quicker too okay so i've got a i'll read a question from this text to voice there from batman do you astral project every day and if so what do you do <laughs> uh, not every day i used to astral project every day back when i was in college and i started work i guess my first few my first two jobs so i must have stopped doing it every day when i was around 20 21 maybe 20 
you know, and then it was just like three times a week type of thing. Now it's it's been once, twice a week, you know, and it's only if I'm bored, so I'm doing some type of meditation or I'm developing something new. And I'm like, you know what, I've been here for 19 minutes. I'm kind of getting bored of this. Let's just actually project. And then I would just slide out. Um, I've been doing it more this year than I did last year, simply because I've been curious as to what's happening over here. And I might end up doing it more because of recent events. Someone I knew passed away, and so I might have to go and explore the astral realm again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's something that I can still do whenever. It's just I've I've been pulled into other areas of life recently, and I just haven't really had much of a, a drive towards astral projection. Recently, I've been doing uh, Kriya Yoga exercises to evolve the mind and the physical body. I've been doing that for the past month. I've recently just got, well, I'm not going to say I'm done with it, but I'm almost done with it, a video on how to evolve the physical body and your spiritual awareness upwards of one year in just 20 seconds. And so that one I've been really hammering down on over the past few days. It should be out by this afternoon. My time, it's morning now, 9.22. So fingers crossed yeah but on that note i would like to say that doing those exercises have helped me gain a little bit more insight on astral projection be that there is a reason as to why you're supposed to lay down on your back and have a straight spine <laughs> uh, there's an electrical current that flows from the base of your spine up to your skull whilst you're astral projecting and if you're ever stuck in sleep paralysis if you can try to crack your head to the left or right Physically, you'll break the current and, and, and come back to your physical body. So I didn't know that before. I believe doing a lot of these Kriya Yoga exercises that make your nervous system sensitive and very electrical will help you astral project in the long run because you gain more energy. So you can do some very weird things. But uh, yeah, everything comes full circle at some point, right? Yeah, I guess this is a, a little related. I missed a question here. Um, so uh, this is from Jojo. So as a person who used to be able to astral project almost every night, I found myself in an annoying position where I've had a real bad dry period for quite some time. And no matter what yeah. I do, I seem yeah. to be devolving into ever lower depths of unconsciousness. If I try, I remain unable to astral project. If I just chill and don't try anything, yet again, I'm unable to astral project. Do you have any tips for those of us that have tried a lot, but remain <laughs> unable to AP, astral project? Yeah, it's your body. It's too low. Uh, there's too much going on in there. In other words, you've got a, a numb body. You could say dead body. Uh, the times that you were able to astral project, you, you generated enough charge to do it, but your body's not used to holding that charge. To oh. change that, Oh. Very simple. Juice fast. Go vegan for upwards of a year to two years. It will change how your body's wired. It will change how it runs, and it will allow you to hold more energy, more electricity. Look at it like bioelectricity. Your whole body is an electrical system. And so, yeah, you're eating too many foods that are like cold foods, if I could say. They're kind of like lead. You put it in the body, it just knocks out your system. And so, it's kind of like constantly throwing water on a fire or putting water on a plug socket and expecting it to work. Uh, you do need to go a certain period of time to clean up the body. And then once you're done, you should be good. Like you shouldn't have that problem anymore. This, what you're going through is quite temporary, but as long as you, only, only as long as you change your diet, otherwise it will stay this way. So I have tons of precognitive whatever it's called, images, like, before I go to bed, like, every night. And usually I get probably around, like, 20 before I eventually go to bed. Is there any, like, astral projection techniques or anything I can do with that? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're doing something which is making them come about. Uh, maybe you're not thinking as much or uh, you did something. <laughs> and it seems to be quite natural to you to do it without realizing. So you're doing something habitually. Maybe you've built a habit of just sitting there and, and doing nothing. Or maybe you're doing something else that I'm not mentioning. 
But whatever that is, find out what that is so you can do it more. That way you can ensure that you can do it every single day and get into that visual state. If you want to actually project there, there's a very, I guess, an obvious way of doing it, like a beginner way of doing it, then there's more of an advanced way of doing it. An obvious way of doing it is just wheel yourself over there. So look at the destination and just entertain the idea of, you know, maybe it's possible to go over there. And then what will happen is your astral body will hear that and it will be like, boop, 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 boop. okay, sure, that's what you want. And it will throw you straight over uh, the portal. <laughs> You'll find yourself there. The more advanced way is it's only, like, you're only able to do this one particular way if you're able to slide out on purpose. Uh, you basically slide out of your body with the understanding that you're just energy. And so with that understanding, you can shrink very small, you can turn into an orb, you can dematerialize, you can become just mind and then find yourself going through into that vision until eventually you're there. Uh, with that being said, if you try to notice any type of spatial dynamic within the vision, Maybe you're seeing rocks and you're seeing the ocean further away. You try to notice that distance, or maybe the clouds have some type of 3D uh, like geometry going on. You, know, you can see some clouds in front of you, then some further back, and then some dispersing even further back with maybe a pink tint because the sunrise happening over there. Maybe there's some purples and blues. If you can see dimension in your vision, that will also have this, this automatic effect of pulling you through the portal and into that actual scenery. I say portal, but really it's a tearing time and space. You're basically creating a window that's more specific. Portals, there's time there when it comes to going from point A to point B. What you're doing is much faster. But uh, yeah, those are like three ways of doing it. I think the dimensional one is actually better, seeing dimension in the visions that will have you go through it much quicker than the other two. Damn, I didn't know that. Thanks. Yeah. Ryan, what no are problem. some electrical foods? Oh, apples, carrots, uh, cucumber. Cuc put, to put this in a blender. Put a uh, carrots, lemon, cucumber, and apple. A little bit of salt, sea salt. Blend it up and juice it. Put it through a nut bag or actually a slow press juicer. I drink like a pint of that pint glass, put some parsley in there too. And you'll notice that you just feel switched on, <laughs> very switched on. That every day in the morning will wake you up. Thank you. I'd yeah. like to ask a question. Sure. Um, so out of any characteristics for astral projection, would you say perseverance is the most, or the most important quality for astral projection? Perseverance can mess a lot of people up because perseverance oftentimes is tied into willpower or stubbornness, like wanting to make it work. And when someone wants to make it work with all their emotions, they're very much open or inclined to tear apart technique and add things to it just to make sure that it works or to stay up all night so that they're tired and then they will try again. And, and all these things greatly ruin your chances of astral projecting. They, they, they just mess it up. You, you need your body to be completely good. You need to have had a good night's sleep before you attempt astral projection. Otherwise, your body's just going to want to take you into REM sleep to catch up on the things that you're missing out. And so there's that. And then there's perseverance is a state of being in and of itself. It's, it's, it's an emotional drive. And you've probably heard this a lot with psychic abilities. You need to be neutral. Uh, if you're constantly emotional, or you're putting a lot of willpower into it, you actually short circuit a lot of the electrical system in the body that's trying to gear itself towards astral projection because you're filling it up with a frequency that shouldn't really be there. You're basically sending signals to your body. You're telling it to be very emotional as just supposed to being the way that you need to be in order to astral project, which is very dissociative. You need to dissociate from the body quite a bit, kind of just leave it where it is and have your awareness travel throughout the room or at least want to have your mind be outside of the body as much as possible to send that very clear signal to your body, a signal. And so, uh, yeah, perseverance will mess up a lot of your attempts, especially in the beginning. I, I can remember being in college. I was like that. I was very headstrong, Taurus, so stubborn. And it's, I must have spent at least four months, maybe even five, hitting my head against a wall, uh, really messing it up for myself, doing so many things just to make sure it worked. And it felt good because it felt like I was 
ready, willing, and able, you know? And that feeling of feeling driven kind of masked the actual feeling of success. It felt like I was doing good because I was emotionally willing, but really I was, I was doing pretty bad because I was just messing it up for myself. So take it slowly and, and chill out with everything and don't do so many practices, you know, probably try three times a week, not every single day, not multiple times per day, unless you've got some type of conditioning method to condition your body, then you can do it every day, but don't attempt to leave your body uh, every single day of the week, maybe three times a week. That sounds safe. Not only that, but it will stop you from getting into a funky headspace. Those who are very emotionally inclined uh, to try astral projection, they get very disappointed very quickly when it doesn't pan out. And so if you do that, you'll crash and burn, you'll get depressed, you'll get stressed out, and then you'll basically block the neuroreceptors in your brain. And because now your brain is blocked up, you can't send a direct signal to your subconscious mind and or your body of what it is that you're trying to achieve. And so it's just not going to know what you're trying to do. You're going to be there stressed out in your bed. And so taking the stressless route works really well. <laughs> yeah. um, that's not such a question. Sure. Thank yeah. you. That was really helpful. No problem. Ryan, I have a question. Sure. When did you feel you made a breakthrough? When did you feel like you started to make actual progress? Ooh, it, don't take this personally and, and don't don't use my experience as a reference point for yours because I was doing a lot of things wrong in the beginning. It took me four years to figure out how to do it whenever I wanted. Okay. It won't take you that long. It took me four years because I was getting in my own way. I was doing a lot of wrong things. And so um, minus all the wrong things, it should have only taken me about a year to completely master and maybe three months to, to, I say, three months to have eight of the 10 attempts actually work or follow through, you know? Uh, yeah, four years. And what the breakthrough was, was doing too much. And I guess stress, learning not to be stressed out. Because when I wasn't stressed out, I thought I'd, I'd go to sleep. You know, I'd basically give up, I'd be stressed out be like, I'm just going to stop, and then the stress would disappear, I'm just going to go to sleep, and then my body would basically pick up where it left off, and then I'll leave my body. The next morning, I was like, oh, crap, I did it last night. What was different? Okay, well, I stopped being stressed out. How does that impact my, my method? Well, because I stopped being stressed out, I stopped trying to control everything. I stopped trying to predict what was going to happen next. I stopped trying to... Uh, insert little techniques here and there, trying to control my breathing, trying to stay still the entire time. All these things that stop you from astral projecting, I just stopped doing them. And then my body was able to follow through because I wasn't in the way. That was the breakthrough. I consider that the breakthrough. So that's when I realized how much a person can get in the way of their own success. And then from there, it was very easy because it was just, okay, self-study practice. Let's try it out, do the exact same things that I did yesterday only, you know, try to project, then just stop trying and then just go to bed and see what happens. Then I'd pick it apart. And then it took me about four years to figure out what was going on specifically, every mental blockage that I had, how that impacted the body and how not to do it. And then it was an everyday thing, multiple times per day. It was very easy. I actually got too easy because it conditioned my body out of a sleep state. It only wanted to actually project, which sounds nice for most people. But it's very problematic when you have work the next day. And if you astral project at nighttime, you come back to your body, you're wired, you have a lot of energy. And so you're not going to sleep until two o'clock in the afternoon the next day when I'm at checkout. And so I had to learn how to fall asleep again. And then I, I just kind of, I had to become aware of how to sleep and aware of how to astral project so that I can shift myself into either or states of being when it suited me and my needs. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, that that's pretty yeah, much yeah sure uh yeah to build off of what you were like saying like in terms of astral projecting at night like i've been trying that for a while since like since it's like uh very convenient in terms of like 
since you'd go to bed anyway and that's like the perfect time to like try it rather than doing it during the day but like what I found was like my mind was often tired and I would it was very like I would often like rather than just like falling into a meditative state I would often like catch myself just thinking about these random things without even realizing it and then I would realize it and force myself to like not like to just be aware of my breath and like meditate um I was wondering like whether I should just try the wake back to bed method or whether like I should just keep trying to like attempt making these attempts at night when I go Good to bed. Net. Yeah, I'm just definitely not at night. Definitely not at night. Uh, if you do it at night, you're fighting against your body's natural ability to want to fall asleep, to fall in line with this natural arcadian rhythm. And you're not going to win, especially in the beginning, because you've got years and years worth of physical conditioning that suggests that when you lay in bed you fall unconscious and when you lay in bed your mind wanders and starts creating imagery and you're trying to stop that from happening including the, the imagery but you, you just you're fighting a losing battle it's easiest to do it after your body has gone what it's needed so rest and then you do it throughout the middle of the day because usually throughout the middle of the day you're pretty much stabilized your body's not trying to make you stay wide awake. It's not trying to make you fall asleep. You've got a nice foundation there to build something completely new, to send a signal to your mind to have you astral project without your mind trying to do other things. The yeah, going to going to bed and like, it's it just doesn't. It's not a really good method. It will actually slow you way down. It's one of those things that sound like it's a good method because it makes sense, but. If you know more of what's happening, it makes more sense not to do it because you can see how you're going to trip yourself up quite a bit. <clears throat> yeah, if you're visualizing or if you're getting visuals, it, it, yeah, it's because you're in bed and your body's trying to get you into dream realm, so it's trying to get you into the body. And the reason why it has you visualize and, and focus on how warm your bed is and stuff like that is because when your awareness goes inward and it focuses on it focuses on your respiratory system when your awareness focuses on the warmth of your your blood or maybe your saliva and stuff like that bodily functions it takes your attention your awareness takes your attention off of the external world and so that's what allows you to charge up you know that's, that's going inward allows your body to recharge and to be ready for the next morning essentially uh, and so you're going to go to sleep because that's what it's trying to do. That's why it's putting your awareness inward as opposed to outward to your environment. If you want to stop seeing imagery, you need to do methods that make your awareness externalized, that make you focus on things outside of you. All these other methods, I call trigger methods, that have you mix being awake or being asleep together. I've even got them on my YouTube channel uh, but they're only trigger methods. They might trick your body into having you leave it for a time, but eventually your body's going to figure out what you're doing and it's just going to stop you from doing it permanently. You have to work with your body if you want to astral project. You can't trick it, and especially if you want to master astral projection because it actually wants to do anything that you suggest to it. It wants, it wants to listen to you. But sometimes it wants to listen to itself, especially if you've been up all night at 3 a.m., you know, you've been setting your alarm clock to wake you up every hour to try your projection. It's just going to be like, no, you're going back to sleep. I have a question. Sure. Um, how do you remove subconscious fear? Mm. you got to do it strictly with logic. <laughs> There's no need to be afraid of something you're not experiencing, you know? Uh, fear, actually, you, sh you should use that logic with your entire life. It just help greatly. It's it's used for the moment. It shouldn't be used before the moment even happens because most of the time you'll be afraid of things that never come to pass. And you spend your entire life just nervous in an anxious wreck. And so <clears throat> use that logic right before you're about to actually project, like when you're trying. Like There's no need to be afraid. Nothing's happening right now. And... Uh, if it makes enough sense to you, your your anxiety should drop dramatically. If it doesn't, you need to use more logic. So you probably say to yourself, let's come up with one randomly. Oh, my my the vibration sound is happening inside of my pineal gland, not my ears. 
so I won't go deaf because technically I don't have ears inside my head, you know. My ears are outside my head. The sound isn't happening in my ears, so I'm not going to go deaf. Saying my pineal gland is built for this vibration, otherwise it wouldn't be creating it, is a very good one. And so that way you can calm down when it's going crazy. And those are the ones I've specifically used, and I haven't needed to use any more. And so logic. Logic beats fear every time when it comes to astral projection. Even when you're out in the astral realm and something's looking at you, you can just say, well, if I'm not afraid, then it's just going to walk away. And you can just chill out and see what happens. If you can get ahead of your fear or ahead of your emotions, logically, then your emotions basically yield to your mind. They listen to everything that you're thinking and they're kind of waiting for something to happen before you freak out, rather than freaking out first. Thank you. I've, 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 on the is, is there too much logic? Only when you're trying to pick apart your technique. Like this, there's, there's, what would you call it? There's constructional logic, if that makes sense. And then there's affirmational logic or sense. Use sense to get yourself out of pickles in the astral plane or even during the astral process. Don't use constructional logic, like trying to pick things apart and getting very scientific with it, because that'll screw up everything. There is quite a difference. Uh, constructional logic stresses you out. It's kind of like you're working your brain to figure out something. But the affirmational logic, like, oh, this isn't happening right now, you're affirming to yourself that there's no threat, it happens and then it doesn't. Your, your brain basically relaxes straight after. There is no nodding sensation of trying to figure something out at all. It actually makes you feel better. You know? And one takes more energy than the other. I've um, got another question, sorry. Sure. Um, I'm finding it really hard to get into that vibration like phase in terms of like also hearing like the jet engine kind of sound. Because last year it happened to me without me even knowing anything about astral projection. I just woke up and I just heard this like really, really loud sound and it was as if someone had gravity powers like pushing me down, you know what I mean? But I had no idea what it yeah. was, but I was totally awake and I was like, then I knew about astral projection later on. And I can't get into that vibration phase now, like, and I keep trying. So do you have any tips on how to get into that? Yeah, it's good. You probably don't need it. Probably don't need it. Like, it goes back into what I was saying earlier about people trying to predict what comes next and how that kind of messes up what the body's trying to do. Everyone's astral body and energetical system is different. You might not need it. It sounds like you don't need to go through that stage. It's, everyone's energy system is different because it's maturing the more you astral project the more you attempt to actually project. At some point, your energy base will be mature enough to that you won't need to go through the vibrational stage or even hear tones. And it doesn't mean that your maturity rate is on like a linear scale. Sometimes, you know, one day you're a beginner and you don't need it, but then the following week you start getting vibrations. It's kind of up or down as to what happens to you energetically. And so trying to plan ahead of time what it's supposed to look like is a losing battle. <laughs> It's best just to do whatever's supposed to get you out of body and then just kind of wait for it to happen or expect something new to happen every time, especially in the beginning because you're discovering the process or the many processes of leaving the body and how it can happen. Once you've gone through so many different ways of astral projecting or so many different types of, what do you call it, steps, some haven't some that haven't been mentioned online or some that have been mentioned, such as the vibrations or the hypnagogic state, then you'll be able to control the process and pick how you come out of body. But usually in the beginning, you don't really have much of a choice but to do the steps that you're doing and to try, kind of just see what happens moving forward until you can get your hands on and start taking control of that process. Yeah. I would say to you, do whatever you're doing, like the meditations, so leave your body, and then when you feel like you're done, just expect anything to happen. Just know that somehow you're going to be out of body, and just lean into that logic, and then expect it to happen. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Oh, by the way, guys, I got like half an hour because I do have a session in thirty minutes. I would like to let everyone know. Normally, my live streams go on for like two hours, but um, have you? More. 
found any substances that help with astral projection? Yeah, like, uh, I've I've tried like I found that like when I smoke weed a bit, like I have had more success, kind of. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't do that long term. Maybe short term, you've gotten success. But what weed does, weed and alcohol, it prevents the brain from going into REM sleep. And so what happens is, is as these days go by and you're smoking more weed or you're drinking even just a little bit of alcohol, your brain's need to enter into REM sleep accumulates. And so it should get harder and harder to actually project because your brain wants to go into a deeper state of sleep every day. And those who, who smoke weed long term find it very difficult to dream because they're not getting into REM. And so it can cause, I wouldn't say permanent damage, but long term damage, which can be hard to come back from. Because if you imagine you know, spending two years of your life and your brain's constantly trying to get into REM sleep, but it's, it's blocked because the neuroreceptors have kind of shifted around because you've always stayed shallow within your dream state, you basically need to rewire your brain in order to connect your brain like that again so that you can have visuals so that your brain can then catch up on what it needs. It's probably been deficient in for a long time, but that's only people who smoke long term. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah, short term you might have success, but it's very it's it probably won't be constant. It definitely isn't worth it. Because what you're yeah. doing in the short term can ruin your results long term. Uh, substance wise to help astral projection. <clears throat> I only know of one, and you kind of need to go to a ceremony to get it. It's Yahe Ayahuasca. It's a specific type of ayahuasca, Colombian. It makes you crap your pants a lot because you completely come out of body and you have no, no ability to control your body anymore because you're not there. I've, and so, I've smoked DMT before, but uh, I haven't tried ayahuasca. That's, that's on my bucket list. Yeah. The only other two that I would suggest would be LSD and mushrooms, but they have to be quite strong. And those two projection states aren't really, I mean, they don't really feel like full-blown natural projections. They will always be somewhat diluted compared to what you could achieve without psychedelics or compared to what you could achieve on that one specific ayahuasca brew, the Yahe. Yeah. Perfect, thanks. No problem. Okay, we got a question from uh, Zanderov. Uh, do demonic entities usually look nice to be deceiving? Uh, they can try, but they screw that up really easily. <laughs> Their eyes, they can't get the eyes down. They're often moving around. Like, like, yeah, it's crazy. Well, yeah, they'll try. But energetically, you know, you'll notice. You have to be pretty negligent to not notice. Uh, yeah, there are people out there that are that negligent, but like you have to be either really horny to the point where you only want to have sex, so your mind is just not even on scanning your environment, but you have to be like really horny to be like that, or I don't, I don't know what else. It's so obvious because their aura is just gross. It's kind of like having the Sith Lord in Star Trek stare at you, smiling and trying, you know, while while trying to be nice. You know that it's a creepy old man that. You just don't want to get inside of his head. And so there are a lot of people or beings in the astral plane during the night in the ethers that might try to get one over on you, but they're not just waiting for you. It's not like you're about to come out of body and there's dozens of them in your room. You have to get their attention most of the time to have them interested in you. A lot of new newbies to astral projection will come out of body and they'll want to know because I did it, it stupid. So I'll speak into everything that you say because you're excited, right? It's hard not to. But that's when you get the attention of the wrong types of beings. You can get the attention of aliens. Definitely don't give them your zip code. You know, don't tell them where you're from. Uh, <laughs> and then you'll be fine. I'd say out of five times that you actually project in the wrong locations, one of the five times, you'll have something that actually wants to attack you or wants to go near you or take your answer or something. And that's only if you actually project at night in the wrong headspace, you know? So you end up in the etheric plane where there's a lot of things. And that's also only if your environment is dirty. So if you've got a messy room, you sit in your room and you think negative thoughts for a long period of time, don't actually project in that room. If members of your family are struggling with their emotions or their mind, 
don't go into their rooms you know if you do accidentally astral project at nighttime in the etheric plane get up out of body uh, open your door and go straight outside just walk down your corridor down your stairs go straight outside don't hang around and just keep walking down the street until eventually you end up somewhere else and then you'll be fine <laughs> have you ever used another name while astral projecting uh no but i was given a couple of names i didn't really believe what they were saying because i'm always like mm, i don't know about that but i was told once that my name was quinn in the astral plane and I was also told that I was a runner in the astral plane. There's like a specific subset of astral projectioners. But I always doubt what a lot of things tell me over there. Uh, I just kind of, I have to be, I have to see it. And even after I've seen it, I have to remember, like, yes, come from me first. I can't have something else tell me what my name is or what I've been because too many things over there will want to manipulate you. I'm making it sound really scary, but it's really not that bad. Just don't actual project at night, you'll be fine. You know, and again, one out of five times will be bad if you actual project, or might be bad if you actual project at night, and you go to that one specific place. It's only one place where things like this happen. Everywhere else is pretty much just sunshine and rainbows, very hyper-realistic, uh, more vivid than this place, more realistic than this place, which is weird, because then you come back here and you think to yourself, is this a dream, or is this an actual plane which it actually is and your physical body is also an astral body it's the outer crust of your astral body so if you can learn to manipulate your astral body and change how it looks or change how it behaves you can do the same thing with this astral body i've mentioned that on my youtube channel i've learned some more things since uh, going into astral projection topics but yeah i mean you, you learn a lot of things when you go over there including how to develop abilities like I did a vice feature, a vice feature where I pulled a memory out of a woman's head on my couch at home. And I learned that skill whilst actual projecting and I brought it back. So there's a lot of things that you can figure out over there simply because your energy field is more palpable. You can feel more of what's happening. Whereas here you might have a, a dead body or a body that's just quite numb to things. But if you can do it over there and you remember what it feels like, you can do it over here too and you gain abilities. And so the payoff when it comes to astral projection is huge. It's definitely worth it. But consider, especially if you want to master astral projection, consider how you are mentally right now. You know, because it only takes one bad trip to change your mind entirely, depending on the type of person that you are. I've had some people that come back after seeing some things or seeing one thing, and they go straight to Jesus Christ go into the church and swear off astral projection. I've had some people who do the same thing with the Quran. They, they turn Muslim. I've had some people that have microdosed bad experiences and they gradually figure out what's going on and they don't go into these, these extremes because they understand the bigger picture. You know, I would say that was a healthy way of interpreting your experiences. These individuals I'm talking about are often omnis if that's a word, they're into omnism, which is the belief that all religions are true and there's truth in all of them. And being out of body allows you to perceive the truth in every religion and the truth about reality itself. itself. Then you become slightly different. And every time you actually project, your physical body becomes different too. You change chemically and, and biologically. Your person, like who you are as a person, starts to change. The more you come back, the less of a person you are. It's not a bad thing. It's just you find less of a need to impress people, to be a particular type of way, to wear specific clothes, to fit into trends or social uh, cliques. There's no need for that anymore. It's, it's, it's strange, but it's kind of like you're being washed mentally and emotionally and you're becoming new again. It's like a reset as a soul. It's really cool. And you'll notice that in the beginning a lot. You start to gravitate away from specific people and specific things music choices, stuff like that. It's all for your betterment, of course, you become cleaner mentally, less congested, and that allows you to travel better too. A bit long-winded there. No, that's a, that's a great answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So you got about uh, 20 minutes? Is that right? 
Yeah, like yeah, about 20 minutes. That's fine. Okay, uh, so another question then uh, from the text of chat uh, from Pawn Sacrifice. In one of your videos, you talked about an experience where you entered two colorful, colorful voids. Uh, one where you experience the sum of human suffering and the next where you experience the suffering of animals. Uh, do you still think of that event sometimes? Yeah, most of the time, <laughs> most of the time, actually. But like some type of traumatic PTSD, like, <laughs> but whenever I see an animal or I see people, it kind of feels like I'm still there. It's weird. It, it kind of feels like I'm, I can still feel that realm that mental plane where i can feel everything's mindsets their suffering how their mind warps into insanity and then sanity again it's like it's kind of behind everything that we see already and so it feels like i'm still there even though i'm saying i'm in my body and i'm looking at animals on the street like dogs or i'm seeing women yelling at their children or fathers that are just mad and projecting onto their a woman because they're having issues working it's i can still feel it and it's weird i can also feel how it's changing over time and slowly getting worse over there in the astral plane i probably actually project there and see it fully again and see how it is matching up to what's happening here right now but uh yeah it's weird i got a question i got a question sure go for it all right, uh, you know, like when your body, like you can get your body like really relaxed when it's like when you when you're tired, and then, but your mm -hmm. mind's awake, mm -hmm. and then uh, motherfucking shit. I gotta go. <laughs> Dang. You All right then. I thought maybe you forgot the question. Yeah, you can All come right. back to it if you remember it. Hey, what? I have a question. Sure. I actually have a, a question for you. Um, okay. I believe that a while ago you had spoken about um, the federal, the Galactic Federation, and about um, that you had been to Andromeda. Is that, was that you? Oh, that was Andromeda. That's interesting. I had no idea where it is. Oftentimes, I did talk about the Galactic Federation of Light and working for them and the astral projection experiences that followed soon after. I didn't mention Andromeda. A lot of the times I go to places, see beings, and they don't necessarily tell me where I am or what they are. But by visual context, I can often make sense online as to what they are. The only ones that I've been able to make sense out of are greys, ashtani, tall whites, and um, draconians, reptilians, different species of reptilians, stuff like that. But Andromeda, I'm not sure. Maybe that was another video kind of oh. mixing in with my one. Okay, yeah, because the same thing happened to me. So I oh. thought maybe we were from the same uh, crew. But never mind. Yeah, I'm from the Andromeda crew. So if you're with the draconians and all that. Uh, let me see. I don't think I'm with, I mean, maybe you can make sense out of it for me. Uh, if I was to say I was with some type of crew, not by choice, I think by selection, specific members of the party were more inclined to my safety and my supervision. They were um, very pale, they had kind of gold coming out of them, like light. Yeah. Uh -uh. yeah. I mine were they reddish. Are. Mine were kind of like reddish skinned. They were. They looked like aliens, and uh, basically, they told me they were very into um, like environmental, and they were very worried about the earth. That's what they. Do they have talking. tattoos? I'm sorry. Did they have tattoos? I didn't see anything like that. They had like these um, silver jumpsuits, and we went into like a a theater, and we were watching a movie. And afterwards, it was kind of funny because they stopped me and they said, we're going to kick you out of the Galactic Federation if you don't stop thinking about boys. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, no, 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 I'll, I'll do whatever you guys want. And they were like, if human beings weren't so worried about sex and they were more worried about the earth, this world would be a different place. And then they basically just shoved me out of the, out of the, the space theater 
and I landed back in my body. Damn. Pretty crazy, yeah. Yeah. Got a little mad too. <laughs> a little upset. Yeah, they were kind of. But, yeah, they were pretty draconian themselves. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds it sounds very much in line with exactly how these beings are. It's perfect, actually. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've had this sinking feeling for a while that the the superpowers of the Earth, like their main goal in life, is to cut us off from our spiritual origins and like turn our bodies cold and dead, like you were saying, or um, Oh, sorry, it's cold out here. Uh, is, am I crazy? <laughs> I wouldn't say you were crazy. I think crazy is just the inability to maintain your mind, you know, so it goes down rabbit holes. And if it goes down a rabbit hole and you have a misunderstanding and then you go down that misunderstood rabbit hole, then you could act crazy because basically you're acting in a way that contradicts reality. But, and that's just an untrained mind, but I wouldn't put it past groups of individuals to want to kind of take our attention off of specific things that you could be doing for yourself to make you healthy, just so that they can make a buck, you know, so they can make money or so that, I mean, it's always basically money driven. Unless you're speaking about aliens or entities, then it's a little different because they don't care for money. So they might want you all to be sexual because they love the energy that comes off of it only. And they're trying to sway you away from spirituality or enlightenment or stuff like that. But um, I think you'll be more inclined. I, th I think other dimensional beings are more inclined to be manipulating with us and our spiritual growth as to supposed to humans, because humans aren't that switched on. Even the ones that are trying to control everything, they can only see so far in front of them, you know, when you've got beings that can see all the way and that can predict human behavior, that can plug and play into you and make you think and do things. And you think that it's all you, but it's not. And so if you take mushrooms, you'll see them. It's always mushrooms. It's weird. Take mushrooms and you go out into a public place. It's very strange. But uh, yeah, I, I always say to people, just take your mind off of all of that because it will drive you insane. It will make you feel very unsafe. And if you're unsafe, you'll be in fight or flight all the time and that's not healthy. So then your body can't rest and repair. And you actually break down physically over time because your body can't repair because you're nervous all the time or scared of something happening. That pit in your stomach, most of the time feelings are subconscious thoughts. So the thoughts that you had at one point that you didn't let go of and they found their way into your body and they're still thinking. And so whenever you see something that's looking like the powers that be are taking over, that part of your mind is seeing that too because it's aware of everything you're seeing and thinking. And then it freaks out and then you get this pit in your stomach. The stomach feeling is often the intuitive center or the part of the mind in the body, you can split it into threes, that is trying to predict your future based off of the past. That's why I say that people don't believe in everything your gut feeling says because, again, it's split into threes. Your gut tries to predict your immediate environment by things off of the past or events, off of the, uh, events stemming from the past. And your heart does it by events stemming from the present moment. You try to predict what's going to happen from the moment, which is why it doesn't make sense most of the time. Your heart's telling you to fall in love with this person, but you're like, what the hell are you doing? The heart's not thinking about the future or your exes. It's thinking about now and feelings. And your mind thinks about the future. Your mind tries to make decisions based off of um, calculations. Where could this go? then you'll stress out mentally. So you've got three intuitive centers. If you can listen to the heart, you'll be better off, even if it doesn't make sense. Eventually, it'll make sense for you. You can trust it a little bit more. But don't trust the mind and the stomach uh, most of the time because it's just it can very easily panic and freak out and make you feel these feelings of dread or something's terribly wrong. It's not to say that it's always going to be wrong and it's always going to mess you up. It's there for a reason. It's just most of the time we listen to it too much. I think it's because the gut's been glamorized a lot, especially within the spiritual field. They call it intuition. And there are a lot of people that will fight me on that. And uh, they just they need to go into their stomach and start really figuring out what's going on there. 
you know. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. No, oh, no. I've got a question about mirrors. Cool. Um, okay. And like different types of portals. So I've been able to use doors as portals because one turned up in my room one time. Like this is in the astrals, just making it clear. Um, mm. And I've be, been able to replicate that on like other doors but every time i've tried to use mirrors as portals like i tried um this morning like i put my hand on the mirror and then like move the energy of where i wanted to go to into try to do that into the mirror and i've done it multiple times but i've never been able to actually use a mirror as a portal yeah. So, do you have any advice on that? Yeah, mirrors are like sat navs, sat navigation, or kind of like Tony Stark's AI Jarvis, in that every mirror, every dimension actually is alive. Well, not every, some of them are dead. Like, you'll go to a dimension and the mirror will be completely pulled, cobwebs over it, dust, stuff like that. Or the reality just doesn't feel like it's active anymore, and you need to look for splits in that reality to travel, like uh, malfunctions in the structure of the reality. But for a mirror that's alive, you've got to interface with it. So you've got to basically speak to it and allow it to do all the work for you. Come up to a mirror, try to sense the thing in it that feels like it's thinking. You know, try to, try to look at it like a living being and try to sense its train of thought. But then yeah. actively speak to it and say, take me to this location. Close your eyes and wait. And then slowly put your hand out very slowly and you should feel that it gets cold and kind of fuzzy then you can go through it. You don't have to close your eyes, but in the beginning, it's hard for the subconscious mind to accept the idea that you can move through a solid object. So it helps to have your eyes closed in the beginning. Yeah. And yeah. Um, also about mirrors, because on a few occasions, you see yourself differently in mirrors. And like, what, what can that be used for? Like, on one occasion, I saw, a, like, a black circle over my third eye in the mirror. And my most recent one, I saw my eyes turned, like, black and red. No, they, they didn't turn. They were red, and then they turned black and red. So does that have any significance? Hmm. The black and red one. It could be your energy is trying to find some type of base formation. Like your energies are trying to stay a particular type of way and swapping certain things out. Or that you're getting an insight, further insight into your energy system through the colors of your eyes or how you're shaped. Especially the dot. And most of the time with psychedelics, when you see spiritual iconography like that or some type of symbolism going on with your actual anatomy it's because you're tapping into a spiritual body that's often depicted in art like Alex Gray or um, maybe some old religious texts if you can find those books that show the body like on Kundalini in these energetical ways yeah but if it's not those things then it could be a deep-seated part of you believes that you should look like that because your astral body can change based on what you think it should look like can be influenced also <clears throat> on what you've seen in your environment. Not so much, though. Everything I just said there is, is quite secondary to the first one, spiritual uh, iconography looking in ways that are quite spiritual. Uh, quite significantly second. It's, it's not common that your astral body will look the way that you think it should look in those modes. It's more common that it will look energetically like how you are, systematically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, most of the time I just look normal or a different version of me in the past or future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're uh, shifting they, around quite a bit with yeah. your astral form. Yeah. And, just, yeah. Yeah, have experiences where you come out of body and look at your hand and your body and try to will yourself into a specific state. Uh, actually, ask your body to be a specific type of body maybe your younger body or your most recent body and, and kind of fix that into your astral memory 
so you can stay a certain way. Yeah. Okay. And um, also, does this link with the um energy you were talking about before about like your body being a battery? As because sometimes I feel extremely tired when I leave my body, and it happens like every maybe every four times or like it feels like there's a lot of gravity or yeah so when your astral body isn't in the shape that it needs to be in it can be very exhausting and taxing on your energy to come out of body it's like you're coming out and you're leaking everywhere blood's everywhere and blood isn't actually everywhere but imagine getting up out of bed and you've got a gash in your lung and you're bleeding inside and then blood's coming out of your mouth and your arms missing so there's a ton of blood on the floor Visually think of that as energy. You're going to be wasting a lot of energy. And gravity is going to be a problem. I call that spiritual pressure coined from uh, bleach. But uh, yeah. there's literally spiritual pressure in dimensions and around beings. And if you cannot keep yourself maintained, you're going to succumb to the spiritual pressure in a location. It can come, you can get to a point where you're completely fine in every location, but in the beginning, it's it's not often easy. Yeah. yeah. So, what would be a solution, especially for the tired feeling? Because I I notice that sometimes I'm able to overcome that, but um, if I if I'm not able to do that, the experience is shorter. Yeah. Do the ash projection method I mentioned earlier, where you exercise your phantom body. Were you here to see that one? Oh yeah, I've got your course as well. Okay, do that one, and astral project for less. Uh, don't astral project for a long period of time. Astral project for like a short period of time, and then come back to your body, and that's it. And okay. when you're out of body, pay attention to the space around you because it will ground you there even more. And then yeah, come back to your body. You know, I've been yeah. trying to do that recently, and yeah, I've had some... Over stuff. time, you'll be able to come out longer and longer and longer, and there won't be any tiredness feeling, because usually when you're out for a really long period of time and you come back, your body's exhausted as well. So this is even after your astral body's finally been able to maintain its shape and form. If you're out for too long, usually, I mean, it depends on the person. With me, it's five days out, I'm coming back tired. <laughs> Yeah, the longest like, I've been is an hour, but yeah, but five days. That's yeah, because your perception of time can warp, yeah. so you can go places where it feels like five days, a few months, thousands of years if you're lucky. But if you go out for that long, mentally, perceptual wise, time wise, it's really hard to maintain your awareness. Five days, I'm I'm gonna forget some things. So I'm just done. Yeah, you know, and so short times best, and work your way up to it. Okay, thank you. It's all right. So okay, do you, uh, okay. Still have time, or do you think? I still have time. Let's see what's going on here. We can probably do one more question. I have a. Time okay, time. I'll do. Um, I want to ask one uh, on behalf of one of our mods. She's uh, just had her first actual experience, astral experiences this month. Um, but she's oh, having. Cool. A, yeah, she had about four. Um, and she's having a problem where she can't get out of her room and she's only having like a 10, 10 to 30 second experiences. Uh, and she's even said that she's tried to like demand clarity. Uh, but every time she does that, she snaps back to body. Uh, her vision's always hazy. Uh, she just wants some grounding methods from you. Some tips to kind of also some tips to get away from her physical body. So I think that there is quote spirit guide, some type of intelligence, but there is always something watching someone doing this for the first time and that decides to prevent them from leaving their room. Like it literally just makes it so you cannot leave your room for upwards of three months at a time sometimes until you're ready to actually be outside your room. Because uh, there's always been some form of intelligence when that happens. It happened to me in the beginning. And it took me a while to get through. I didn't do anything really to get out of my house. It just one day was open, you know. But if you want to be grounded more in the astral plane, even more so than when you first left your body, 
do what I said to the person previously. When you're out of body, focus on the space between objects. You know, like this bed. If I focused the space from the mosquito net down to the actual mattress, for you around about four, maybe five feet, maybe. Uh, that will actually allow me to ground myself in the astral plane even more. And you can do that with many things, like minuscule minis minis things. Uh, I don't have really any. I've got a watch. Let's say you saw a watch on your desk. You can try and guess the distance from here to there, you know, four inches maybe. And that will ground you in the astral plane even more. And it's, like I said, even more than when you actually left your body. problem with this is you can get cocky. You can think, oh, I don't need to do this anymore. I'm out. This was like I could be out for days. I'm good. Oh, you'll come back to your body so fast, you wonder what happened. Because for some reason, when you get pulled back to your body, you know you're coming back. You can feel it happening, right? But if you ground yourself even more over there, it's like the person back there is trying to get you back. There isn't a person there, but let's say if it was, gets mad and wants to yank you back even more because you were supposed to come back earlier. And so keep it up. Keep maintaining your awareness or fixing your awareness on the space between objects in the astral plane and you'll stay there for a much longer period of time that might be long enough for you to then leave your bedroom but um, i wouldn't say get stressed out or upset that you can't leave if it's closed fine i guess you're supposed to look for something in your room look at it like a resident evil game you know where you have to look for little keys in drawers or something that will unlock your way out of that level obviously not literally because it's not like you need a key to get out over there i i mean i wish that'd be fun but it's it's not like that it's most of the time the way out is your mentality you know i mean again in retrospect the way i got out for the first time was i just waited until eventually i was able to leave the doors just open but there have been a few experiences where i have been stuck in specific rooms and the only way out was to change my mind and so perhaps i was stressed out or perhaps i was angry i was dealing with something uh, during the day and you know these other dimensions they won't allow you to come into those realms if you're angry it's not like there's a gatekeeper there saying no you're too mad of a person you can't come in it's more of a vibration thing they want you to come to their realm and so if you can calm down and go into zen mode just like kind of sit down in the astral realm and take a few breaths imaginary breaths and just be at peace, you should enter into another plane of existence. And then eventually these beings that are stopping you from leaving your room will just leave you completely. It's like, okay, she's good enough now and you'll be good to go all of the time. Yeah, hope that makes sense. Yeah, that's great, thank you. No problem. But on that note, a do have to go. So if there's anything else before we close down? Uh, no, that's great. Thank you so much for answering all the questions. They were really insightful. Um, definitely. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for coming. coming. Yeah, thanks for coming. being here. We all really appreciate it. Uh, no problem. This is fun. This is so much more intimate than usual things. I actually really like this. Come back in time. Yeah, I'm back and see you <laughs> we'll do definitely yeah and uh yeah if you if you guys are into spiritual evolution definitely check out my next video i've been kind of stalling on it mainly because i've wanted to make sure that it's perfect i've been really excited about the the method because i've been doing it for over a month and it's insane and so that should be out by today if not today and definitely tomorrow is that on your main but, channel? Uh, yeah it's on my youtube channel Ryan Cropper. Obviously, there's a bunch of astral projection stuff there. For anyone that is seeing me for the first time on Discord, there's a few things there to playlists as well. Uh, yeah, there's probably about five. No, wait, there's more than that. There's maybe seven astral projection techniques over there. There's one video which is five in one go, which is I think it's the best video on there, although it hasn't got as many views as some of the most popular ones. But it's more of a visual thing. You see me do the actual techniques and walk you through it. And those are some of the beginning techniques that I did before I learned how to master astral projection using a conditioning method that conditions the body into an astral projection state. It's a 10-step method, but seven of the steps condition you into that state. 
And so what that basically feels like is no matter where you are in the world, no matter what the time is, you'll feel like you can actually project because you've conditioned yourself into that state of being so much with the steps. And so that one, though, is a, it's a course. It's available on my website, ryancropper.com, as well as an actual projection starter kit that goes into the actual mentality uh, behind your, your attempts. You know, whilst you're astral projecting, you can think yourself into these stressful situations. And so I go through the list of the ones that I went through during my four years of struggling. And I, I, I mentioned the mental blockages in a way that allow you to dissolve the mental blocks towards astral protection, making it far easier to leave your body. And so that can also be found over there too. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah. I guess we'll okay. leave you to it. <laughs> awesome. And uh, yeah, if you yeah. ever want to, you know, come back, you just uh, get in my DMs and we can organize something. <laughs> Sure. I mean, it sounds fun. I like, I like that. I like that idea too. Definitely. At some point we'll do. All right. Then we'll take care, everyone. Okay. And thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.